Uh, my name is Andy Laventhal. I work for uh, Sheriff Phil Stametti in Lorain County, Ohio. Uh, Sheriff Stametti's uh, served uh, 24 years and he's uh, not running again this year, but uh, I'm pleased to have been with him for a long time. Because of his tenure and stability in uh, the Sheriff's Office, we've been able to create a program that's known as Rapid Reentry. It started with a case management idea uh, of helping the inmate population meet some needs while they're in jail. And it evolved from that point since 2017 till, till the present time. But lately, there's been, a, there's been a chance for us to look around and look at some other jails within the state and realize that uh, those of us in jails are do, doing something unique. And I'm excited about the momentum that we have within Ohio right now because um, jail reentry nationwide is not very popular and not widely known. So we're here this morning and I want to thank everybody for their attendance. My two co-chairs that aren't here today, but um, this is kind of not in their wheelhouse anyways. This is more of a jail topic. And so um, we're just going to go ahead and move, move on without them. Today we have some presenters with us. Um, I have some folks from, hardworking folks from Montgomery County Jail, Butler County, and Franklin County, and they will share with us their versions of their jails re-entry models. Jails are all unique, folks. Jails aren't the same as prisons, and you need to understand that very early in the process to understand how you can meet the needs of that population, both in that facility and as they prepare to leave that facility and re-enter the community. So a basic uh, definition for re-entry in case you're not familiar with it, it's just the idea of meeting the needs of those while they are incarcerated to improve their outcome upon release. In doing so, making them healthier, safer, stronger, um, more sustainable, and doing the same thing for our community as well. So the national numbers look like this, and, and Justice Stratton uh, alluded to it. Nationally, jails come into contact, book, process, into their facilities 14 times as many people as our prison system does. So nationwide, the federal and state prison systems encounter about 650,000 people per year. But nationwide, your jails encounter 9 million. If we as a nation are making inroads with ministering, with intervening in the lives of those people while they're incarcerated, we must understand that nationally, only one in 15 ever goes to prison. The other 14 hit the jail and then they're back on the street, whether that's two days, 10 days, two months, 10 months. And they didn't receive the benefit of those reentry services by and large but they all have the same needs so as we talk about this 14 to 1 ratio think about it like this portland oregon up there on the west coast portland oregon has a population of about 650,000 people for reference franklin county that uh, we're in here now is just slightly slightly under a million Portland, Oregon, 650, roughly the same number of people as we book into the uh, federal and state prison systems each year. The jails book the population of Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, and Philadelphia combined every year. So that's a very large number that you have to keep your mind on when we talk about resources. Well, let's talk about Ohio. Ohio is even worse. The discrepancy is wider. One in 20 people that hit the criminal justice system in this state end up going to prison. The other 19 are going to go to your county jail and then they're going to return to your community. But they all have the same needs. Unemployment, education, um, substance abuse, um, recovery needs, mental health issues, uh, homelessness, poverty, health insurance, all of those things, those same needs that are present in that population when they go to prison 
are also present in that population that hits the jail. But those people don't go to prison, and so they don't receive any of that reentry programming when they return to the streets. Now, mind you, I get it. They're not separated for years and years. Um, the average length of stay for somebody that goes to the state prison system is 2.7 years. The average length of stay for somebody in a county jail within the state is about 19 days. So, sure, they're not separated for years and years. They don't have to start over from scratch, but they do have the same needs. And what if you can address some of those needs while they're there, or at least start something for them while they're there, that they can continue in the community when they get released? The di biggest difference between jails and prisons is prison populations are sentenced felons. Jail populations are everything. Everything you can think of, from the person who had a speeding ticket and forgot to pay their fines and eventually ran afoul of the law and there was a warrant issued for them, a nonviolent driving violation could put you in jail, at least briefly, all the way up to everything you hear about in prison, all the serious murder, rape, kidnapping, everything else. They all go to jail first. But only one in Ohio, one out of 20, goes to prison. The rest are on community control or released back, in the, back onto your streets. So what we're trying to do is we're trying in Ohio to make a movement here to, to find out what jails can do and how they can meet the needs of this population. All of this, all of this dates back to the 2008 Second Chance Act. 2008 legislation said we have to try to improve outcomes for those in custody and carceral settings. And you can see that local jails are included amongst that. Council of State Governments uh, tells us that 2.2 million people are incarcerated in the, in the United States are going to need those resources when they come out. Um, prison or jail, again. 16 years worth of that second chance activity hasn't produced a strong outcome for jail populations. Jail reentry is not well known, it's not well publicized, and quite frankly, there aren't many jails that are practicing any type of reentry programming. On the other hand, prison reentry is the prison is the reentry that most people in our community are familiar with, and most people in this room are probably familiar with. These slides and these little pictures represent the the uh, advertising of many people who are involved with prison reentry. I just pulled these off the internet in a quick little search and, and captured and post. The reason I'm showing you these is because I want you to understand that. The reentry that America knows today is prison reentry, but we'd like to introduce them to jail reentry, and we think there's a need for it. Reentry 2030 was launched a couple of years ago. We're hoping to get on and catch that wave of reentry 2030 and work cooperatively with the Council of State Governments. We've had some engagement with them. But during the past 50 years, our nation hasn't invested a lot of money in jails. They've invested in prisons. It's easier to research prisons as compared to jails. Uh, we don't have the same perspective. We don't have the same understanding of jail operations that we do with prison operations. It's harder to get a handle on them. They're all different. Uh, Montgomery County's jail is different from Lorraine's, and Butler's is different from theirs, and Franklin's is way bigger than all of ours, and that's what makes them dissimilar and hard to study. A prison system is the prison system, and you can look at all the, the prisons within that system in, at one spot of one hierarchy point. In jails, we don't have that. We impact a much wider segment of the population, and so it's important for us to address those needs. Reentry supports are some of the things that we talk about. Healthcare connections. What are these people looking like when they arrive at our doors? When they come to jail, they are straight off of the street. What were they doing in the week or two prior to the, the day they arrived in our jail? Were they abusing substances? Were they, uh, did they have a violent encounter? Was there um, a, a crisis? Are they in crisis? So they come to our doors and, and in many states. Um, and we like to address their health care needs while they're there. And of course, we do have jail standards. And the jail standard says that you will provide this predetermined amount of care while these people are in your custody. But it ends there. There is nothing that speaks to, and you will try to get them set up 
so that they have a better opportunity to be successful when they return to the community. Social services is the same, same. Mental health, the mental health in our correctional facilities, I mean, that's what this task force is about. And, and the numbers are there. I, I can tell you that the mental health needs in our county jail are one of the largest demands for resources, manpower, and one of the highest risk, highest liability pieces in your jail. Um, so anything we can do to improve those outcomes is worthwhile and something we need to take a look at. Um, so let's take a look at what we have as far as funding examples. Prison system funding for reentry is different than what we have in county jails. We don't have one specific funding source that funds these county jails reentry programs. And that's why they really don't exist in a widespread sense. What we have is creative ways that they have blossomed and we found a way to make them work. And the only way they will be successful um, on a larger scale throughout the state or the nation is if there is a more stable funding stream for them. Um, we, we talk about our funding comes through our budgets from the, the sheriff's office budget comes to the commissioners. Uh, we do have a piece from OMAS and we're very thankful uh, for OMAS for their drug reimbursement program. I'll be honest with you, we have an MAT program in Lorain County and that MAT program would not service the number of people that it does if we did not have support from OMAS for reimbursement for our medication costs and a cooperative agreement through substance abuse recovery um, for grant funding to support some of the nursing needs as well and the uh, labs and all the other pieces that go with it. There's another component from OMAS, Tracy Plowk started back, I don't remember when that was, 16, 2008, I don't, I don't remember, before my time when I was in there. Um, that is in place and helping some pro, uh, jails within the state also meet some of these needs, creative programs, but this funding is temporary. It's not guaranteed. We don't know how long it will be there. Um, my program in Lorain County is uh, funded through uh, at the Mars Board. Um, that's how we get our funding. And we know that there's some of those people in attendance today f for some other Mars Boards throughout the state and we appreciate that. Take a listen, see if you can put something together in your own county and grants look there's lots of grants that come out from the feds bja um, all the federal programs they want to help they they are trying to help but they don't know how to connect to jails we in jails don't have the same people in place that um, the prison system may or that um, nonprofit um, per, uh, nonprofits have we don't link well and link cleanly to um, grant funding and so we've got to break that barrier and thankfully uh, Carlton Moore the BJA director is working with us he's listening and uh, we're trying to make some inroads there if we had Carlton in place for another 15 or 20 years I think we would have some some good progress made but as it is right now at least he's listening they're trying I've shown them the disconnect that's there and uh, they're working on it but he can't reinvent that wheel in four years there. So, so let's talk about some uh, funding challenges. We, we've been talking about them briefly already. We don't have the we don't have the money to minister as widely as we'd like to. Um, the grant funding puts us in competitive uh, situations with one another, and um, anything that's short term uh, could lead to longevity problems. So you have to be careful with how you build it in your jail. If it's only short term, you don't want to impact your normal procedures too heavily with it. Um, and that was one of the things that we really had to look at in Lorain County. Um, there are no models, folks. There was a model that described jail reentry back in 2009, transition from jails to community. It fell on its face. There was there is nothing long term that I'm aware of that came out of that that could be sustained without heavy financial support it was top heavy and they were talking about sentenced individuals for the most part in county jails only 20 percent of our population is sentenced everybody else is there waiting on bond they're waiting to post bond they're waiting on a court date um, we don't know when they're going to get released and when we talk about reentry, that's one of the biggest problems that we have 
In prison reentry, you can work towards a known date. When the person gets to prison, within a couple of hours, a couple of days, we know when they're going to get out. I'm going to get out on September 30th of 2026, and now I can start working towards that date. When you're in jail, you don't know that for the most part. 80% don't know. They're going to, when do I go to court? Who is my attorney? What, what's my bond amount? And they're dealing with the, all the baggage that they came in with, and we're trying to help them with that. So Buckeye State Sheriff's Association is also involved in reentry on a different level. Medicaid 1115 waiver opportunity is another chance for jails to get their foot in the door and start meeting the needs of our jail populations before they return to the community. So as jail reentry is growing here within Ohio, and we'll show you by some of our other county jails here today, it's also being discussed at the national level, at least th those discussions are starting. So the reentry waiver, show of hands and just in this room, I know I can't see online. Anybody familiar with the uh, reentry 1115? Okay, so we've got a lot of people. So most people are familiar. So the idea is that you're going to start meeting the needs of these people in custody before they are released um, for um, primarily, most of the waivers are addressing substance abuse needs and mental health and case management is a heavy process of it. Well, case management is a lot of what we are doing in jails right now with our reentry programs. So it's a clean mesh. So we are working within the state. The Buckeye State Sheriff's Association is working closely with the Ohio Department of Medicaid, Governor DeWine's administration, and uh, thankfully a partnership with Ohio University to get that ball rolling. Um, they are having listening sessions. We want to improve those outcomes. Um, so, how are we doing it? We met with Medicaid. We have a, a questionnaire being developed that's going to go out to all of our jails. Mind you, it's been, in my lifetime, I'm 58, it's been 58 years that Medicaid has been around, give or take, but it's been 58 years that inmates have been excluded from it. So. Our jails have been set up to fund their medical needs in a specific way, organically grown, and we can't just flip a switch and jump onto Medicaid because we don't have the infrastructure for it. So there's a lot of work behind the scenes, but um, we're, we are working with Medicaid, we're working with the governor's uh, administration to see what the viability is. If it doesn't happen this time around, we need to get it in the future. It can make a big difference. Uh, when we talk about a small jail that might have eight hours per day of medical coverage, if they can increase their medical coverage and capacity through a Medicaid waiver um, by boosting up their support and their services, that will improve our, our jail population across the state. Outcomes for them. Other states have already got on board. California, uh, Montana, Washington, Massachusetts, California was the first. Um, there are other waivers that have been applied. Uh, Ohio is not there yet, and that's what we're working towards. But I'm glad to be here with you and at least be talking about these opportunities because for a long time we didn't have this. We, weren't, we didn't have the opportunity to talk about our jails in a group setting like this especially how some of these programs have evolved. Um, with support from the governor's office, BSSA has met with Medicaid. We talked about our current staffing approaches. We talked about some of those obstacles that, that we have to overcome. And we'll see where that plays out here in the next couple months. Um, I'd like to tell you about an opportunity that we're going to put together on November 8th in cooperation with uh, Ohio University. We're going to try to convene for the first time jails and some of our um, county commissioners association and behavioral health authorities and other uh, entities that would like to come. We'd like to invite you to the Dublin campus and there's a flyer on everybody's table here that's been passed out. A one day symposium we're going to try to get on the same page as far as needs and wants we're going to present some more ideas from local jails throughout the state and if you'd like to participate we'd really love to have you there registration opens this week there is a link there that will get you signed up for it 
And uh, it's just one more thing to keep the ball rolling for reentry in Ohio. Ohio, I think, is going to lead the way. And it's, it's not a clean process and it's not a, a well-beaten process, but change has got to start somewhere. And we're trying to make that happen here.